Hello. Um, this should be an interesting video. Uh, so, I recently spoke about like meditations and dreaming and, well first I hope that you're doing well. Um, I'm a little, I don't know, in, in an anticipating kind of mode. Um, anticipatory, I don't know, is that just going too far? I don't know. I'm a little shyer and more nervous than usual. So, but in my most, I think, recent video, I spoke about like meditation and like dreaming and, uh, you know, feeling as if um, I was other places, you know. And so now I'm going to talk about what other places I've gone during these times and um, I guess I have to do a little bit of a disclaimer some of it is um, graphic but the thing is all of them had good outcomes uh, so and I'll probably wind up repeating this but during these situations I don't have a sense of fear or anything so like when I wake up that's a different story then I might be a little shaken up and you know all that kind of stuff so um so most recently what happened oh gosh so I say oh gosh because like I can see the situation and like after I'm out of it then I'm like what so the most recent situation I was walking and you know I'm seeing out of my eyes like I'm not seeing like third I see third person a little bit but for the most part things begin when I'm looking through someone else's eyes or my maybe my own um, but I was in this parking structure and I felt as if I was leaving a venue or a club or something and there were people walking back to their cars and I remember there was a girl that was walking around this ramp and I think she and I were in the same group but she kept walking like into the area cars were driving and the ramp like went up like if you're going up floors in a parking garage and it had, it had curves so there was like a blind spot so I kept on trying to tell her like don't step there because cars are coming and coming around that curb they can't see you so I want to say that she walked into I guess traffic there's not like traffic like outside but like parking garage you know cars you know and I want to say that there was she walked into like where the cars were driving into and or around and she caused an accident and I remember the accident being kind of like dramatic you know like like a car was going like like abnormally fast or it hit a car in an abnormal way and it kind of like rolled over an entire car but that part is kind of like fuzzy but I remember the aftermath was a woman like standing away from her car that was wrecked and holding I think a kid a little baby like a little kid and just smoking a cigarette and I remember like looking back at the wreck there were two little girls on the ground like by themselves like and the girls were maybe three to five years old and I remember them like being relatively like calm because they were laying on the ground but then they were like can we have a pillow for our head you know 
And I remember thinking, like, you were just in this terrible wreck, and it looks like your mom is over there, and she just doesn't care. And I remember, like, going up to the little girls and having them put their head, like, kneeling on the ground and their heads, you know, on my lap. And then, you know, I remember from there, it was just, like, a feeling of waiting for the ambulance and the police to come. And I remember, like there was a time where I could see the woman's face close up and she just didn't seem like she seemed drunk and she didn't seem like she cared and she was just still smoking and she just had this like dead look in her eyes and then I remember seeing like another flash of a mugshot and remember you know knowing that she was like arrested for driving drunk and causing this accident so that was the dream that I had today and I woke up and it was just like I knew what was going on and it just bothered me like not the little girls because I felt like they were okay I always get the feeling that the people that are in these situations are okay what hurt was the mom's disposition there was another time um, and most of these have to do with like children um, but there was another time where, like, I guess the next, the most next to recent one was this lady, and I remember, like, I remember getting off of a bus, and there were people that I recognized near, like, public figures, but then, um, I went into this building and there was a woman and um, she seemed like she was in a daze and she was like in a back room by herself and there was like light shining through um, a window and she was just like holding this baby that was maybe six months old and I remember her faintly saying she's like it doesn't seem like she's breathing anymore I don't think she's breathing and she just seemed really out of it and I came like I guess onto the scene like as she was saying that and it didn't seem as if she saw me but I was seeing her like first person like through my own eyes you know and um the next thing I got the intuition about was, and I believe my twin flame was letting me know, like, this, the situation changed because I remember, like, the baby next being on the floor and dying. And between that point and the point in which the baby was in her arms, she's just out of it at this point. It seems like she tried to smother her kid and she went into this like other mental state and um i was interacting i think spiritually through i think her or somebody to try to dial an ambulance or like the you know the police and 911 to come um and it was, I remember it, it being kind of like trying to solve a, like a Rubik's Cube or like um, like a puzzle that was like timed and you only have like a short amount of time. I remember that feeling of haste and I remember like her, her hands couldn't move, she couldn't function, like getting through the phone, the phone was jacked and everything was just difficult about getting this emergency call to go through. And then I remember like, my twin flame letting me know like the baby's on the floor like basically on their way out you know um and I remember having to like console the baby and then finally like I think the police came and then the next thing I know I'm in the <sighs> emergency room and then the baby is getting resuscitated and I remember having to speak to the baby, 
to try to get the baby to realize to breathe through basically to breathe into its lungs versus breathing into its stomach and communicating with the baby wasn't like a big deal like I I remember you know even after waking up like and I think this may have happened after I woke up I'm not sure like because I go in and out like I'll sleep like I'll have like these meditation periods where like I'm awake and then I'll fall asleep and then these things happen and then I wake up and realize like like I immediately remember the dream and then so you know sometimes people are in the hospital and I go back in and like remember that they're there and then I check on them you know like after I wake up and stuff and I can be there and stuff so with the baby they were resuscitating but you know you know you have an option to like breathe through your stomach like or like your nose goes directly to like your lungs but when you breathe through your mouth you have a like more of a chance of having air go into your stomach i was basically letting the baby know like the difference between the two and this is a very calm period you know i can see that there's like it's like havoc in the emergency room but like between me and the child it was just like you know um relatively calm and then I just kept on like guiding the baby like you know you know and then I would think about like the its brain and to make sure it didn't get like brain damage like I guess kind of like a sort of Reiki situation where I'm like assessing its mental or its brain state and trying to like guide oxygen to those places and over the next few days I would you know have interactions with the baby in the emergency room and then it gets to a point where you just know everything is okay so another one that happened was I was at an airport I remember waiting in line and it feeling like really familiar and like it was like a foreign airport like not one I've ever seen before I felt like I was overseas like in Russia or some Slavic place like I remember getting that feeling when I went into the parking garage like I was waiting in line for something it felt like customs but the exit door was like right there so it was kind of like a security exit checkpoint or something like that and I remember, again, my twin kind of guiding me. Like, I remember him being there. Um, and then I remember, like, like him intuitively telling me, you need to get on that van. And so, like, the van seemed to be like a shuttle leaving the airport. And so I remember, like, really feeling like I needed to get on this van. So, like, I ran across the parking lot to, like, where the waiting line was I guess where people were like queuing to go onto the van or the shuttle but the shuttle kind of had like a like a, a van kind of feel like where the back opened up and I remember getting into the van through the back and I was one of the last people seated on these like side benches and it didn't seem as if anyone could see me um and the whole thing seemed kind of rustic so kind of off and then there was like a boy who like climbed over a seat to the seat behind him and things seemed fine and then this was like a dream kind of feeling where things seemed, seemed kind of like dreamy and bizarre but then it got real because then I realized that the boy stabbed the man in the neck and I could see his um, stab hole in his neck. And I don't remember all the details, but I remember there being like communication with doctors, something about like making sure like like a pre like a prepar preparation statement of like this guy's like losing like a lot of blood. Um, I think something about like keeping something over the wound but I remember most of all like being in the hospital with this person but I don't remember I don't know who the person is it just seems as if when I go to these places people are like 
calling on, calling for help, you know, and there's a lot more like details and stuff like that, but I won't, you know, share those things here. Um, but like another um, time that it happened, this was like the one of the first times that I realized like this was a thing, you know. Um, there was a baby, like I was in this like back. I was in these like like in these apartments like outside but like in an area where there wasn't a lot of traffic and I remember it being like dark and like dismal and nighttime and just bad vibes man and I remember like a baby being thrown and it I remember being there with it like you know um and this was like more for support, but I remember also being with the baby in the hospital, but I remember it being thrown, like it was just like thrown like across the pavement. And I remember when it got, and it was like maybe four months old, like little. And when it got to the hospital, the people working on it were like in shock that it didn't have as many injuries for what it had gone through i remember also like this dream exposed or this encounter exposed things about my childhood so it was like a combination dream like where i i think i may have had this dream twice but there was like child abuse of a specific kind going on in one of the apartments and that may have been in the first one or maybe it was the first part of like just the dream in general but um, I remember it having like a familiar kind of like feel and stuff and then like is then come comes the part like where the baby uh, got thrown and then the hospital stay and I remember keeping on checking in with the baby and I remember there being like you know dialogue like not specific words but like or like a dialogue of like they don't want me um, what am I going to do? Like, my mom doesn't love me. Like, even though it was like a very young child, there's, it made me realize like the spirit is still very like aware. And that's another thing that kind of happens during these times is like, you learn more about like the human, like spirit, or the spirit in general. So... Um, I can't remember offhand any other times like these types of things happening. I think there's like a couple more and, um, and sometimes I go into places where like there's not anything like wrong, you know, but it seemed like I was there for a reason, maybe to prevent something or I don't know, like I kind of get surprised it's, it's a different feeling when I have these experiences and there's not like an emergency. Um, but like I said, like I don't get nervous in those situations. Um, I don't feel like anxious. I'm actually less anxious, but when I wake up, I guess I come back to like earth mode, I guess, or human mode or whatever you want to call it. And then my feelings get hurt, you know, and I cry sometimes and because like I think about like the kids and I think about these situations like the one that happened today with the two girls I was just like they're fine but you know I just felt like animosity towards their mom because the look on her face and her disposition like was, was like 
it's like that crazy stuff that you see on the news, you know, like kids getting kept in cages or, you know, killed in certain ways or abused like really badly. And you're looking like that's just crazy. It's and it's a different feeling when you're watching it like on TV because the news puts everything into like this like hyper realistic frame you know it puts it into like it's it's an I was gonna say it puts it in a box and then my next thought was like it's like a, you know like what you see on TV like things on a screen come with a, a kind of feeling of non-reality you know so when I was seeing this woman it was like worse seeing her standing there and like experiencing her energy like not through a mug well, through a mug shot but then you know that came later when I saw that it was like you know just being face to face with this woman and the and her just smoking a cigarette like while her kids were just sitting there like you know hurt and laying on a sidewalk and she's like away from them like you know so or maybe I don't know then I start questioning like maybe she was driving another car and they weren't her kids and maybe I don't know but and that's a possibility that maybe someone died inside the car but that's a big possibility that maybe they weren't her kids and she was just there wasted while someone else's kids were hurt while their parent was dying. Those are the types of encounters that I have in um, I guess the dreamscape, the ethers, uh, the spirit world. And there's a lot of other things that happen in the spirit world during like um, sometimes, you know, it's very complex, you know, it's like the more you see, it's like, how do you even like learn about all of these things? Like, where do you come from? <laughs> like, you know, like what's, what's your story? You know, like I am trying to understand myself and I keep on learning these big things that are like, astonishing and then I start questioning like at first you know with one of the first times that it happened it was like nah but you know your intuition kind of tells you otherwise but then it starts happening over and over you see patterns and it's like but then the biggest thing like one of the biggest things like my twin flame support is one of the biggest but another huge thing is like the biblical support. Like I'm Christian and I remember today like reading like a passage and I still have it open. Not to get too like preachy, but you know, it's Acts. Um, chapter 12 and it's pretty much verses 1 through 17 so here I don't want to read too much I'm trying to see what the best line and and going out he followed him and did not know that this happening through an angel was real but he thought he was he saw a vision that's just a little snippet like I prayed about it and I was like God please show me something to like you know help me <laughs> with this because this is not the first time that I've had like vivid biblical support like this and that was just like a small like line because I'm not trying to 
sit here and read but I think that just shows like enough you know and every time some things like this happen like I'm praying about it and reading the Bible about it because like you know you think you're in the hospital or you feel as if you're in the hospital with like people who need help um and then you know you go and you know the 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 answer my prayer that I got today was like you can start reading anywhere and I was like okay and my my bible's already open there I was at a different part you know um like the that day or the day before and I just skipped ahead you know I was like okay I'm going to start reading here that's that feels pretty good and like immediately it just started talking about like you thought you were having a vision but that was real and I was like ah uh, okay that's not a coincidence not every verse in the bible mentions these types of things like at all you know and this is like the kind of support that I get have gotten through this whole journey from the time that it started because you know when I started really trying when I started like waking up and hearing and stuff like that, you know, I didn't want to just assume stuff. So I was like, you know, collecting the info, but then, you know, staying prayerful about it. This hasn't like lit up for years, you know, so it's pretty intense. And I just, you know, try to enjoy the work and like concentrate and keep it like one day at a time and stay strong and build my trust and build my confidence I mean I have the confidence the trust is the challenge but like it's getting there and you know as I learn more about myself that helps me like learn more about my twin flame which is an intense thing on its own because you know then it just goes back and forth so on that note I want to finish up here um, also like speaking about these things like brings progress you know, um, I think when you discuss these things out loud, um, it leads to more uh, understanding de and development and progress. So I guess it would be continuing the momentum. So, you know doing this video was a good idea now even though I, at first I wasn't looking forward to it I anticipated just crying on camera and I don't really feel like crying on camera you know like in in here I'm fine I'll cry in life but crying on camera like I don't know I'm already I don't know so but I wouldn't like I guess I would try not to like on camera so but anyway, but it wasn't like that, you know, so that was pretty interesting. I wasn't expecting that. So, but I hope that you have a good night and I will see you soon. Bye.